Hello, welcome to another exciting creature tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use the advanced flow VFX system to create a scene like this, a spaceship with a bunch of streaming particles and an asteroid field. So if you want to learn how to do this in Creature, stay tuned and watch this video tutorial. Okay, now I have a simplified project loaded with this exact same spaceship, but the particle system has been stripped down to its more simplified components so we can actually I can actually teach you how this whole thing works. But before we get started on flow, I'd like to highlight to you how the spaceship animation was done. It's pretty simple stuff. It's just using a combination of creature motors. The base is using a move bounce motor. Actually, in the preview, you can see this guy moving, right? So the base is using a move bounce motor, and then we have a bunch of rotate cycle motors on the wings to give it that that basically jittery effect, you know, simulating the engine as it actually wobbles or flies through the space, right? Just simulating the vibrations of the thrusters of the spaceship. But it's not that exciting because what we are here to talk about is how to actually get those streams, those really cool visuals in, the, the V effect of particles in to make it a compelling uh, animation to sell the look that this is actually a spaceship flying through space. And of course, we have to add an asteroid field because otherwise, what's space without an asteroid field, right? So let's get started. And the first thing you do is click on animate, go to multiple straps and effects, and click on flow advanced particle systems. Okay, so I've loaded up flow, and this is a very simplified version of the full blown VFX node graph that was constructed for the actual demo, but, but we're going to go through the important components and hopefully get you along the way to create something similar. Now, the first thing we're going to focus on is actually the streams, those really cool streaming, you know, those streams, particle streams are coming out from the spaceship. You're probably wondering how that was created. That was actually done with flow, completely done in flow, and it shows you the flexibility and power of the flow system. So let's go through a couple of concepts that were used to create that system. Again, this is a more advanced tutorial, so if you haven't actually used Flow or just want to get familiarized yourself with the basics of Flow, I recommend you watch the earlier tutorials on Flow to learn about you know, the basic components of Flow, the node graph system, the procedural system, and how you create those basic fields, like the radio field and what kinds of solvers are available. Assuming you've watched that, I'm going to jump right in. So, as usual, the first thing we do is we start with a region pause. That's where we embed a source. We're trying to basically emit a source from a location on the object, on our character, right? So we always need a region pause node, which the output positions, the different components are actually connected to our radial source. Now the radial source is going to be your standard go-to source to emit particles. It's actually very convenient because it's extremely tweakable. It, even though it's called a radial source, you'll, see, you'll soon see how flexible it really is. Now let me pull this window aside and let's actually look at the region position configuration. As described in the previous tutorials, there is this embed trial, embed triangle option. And so if you click on it, you will see I have a red dot over here. See, this is where the particles are emitted from. This is where our, our green streams are emitted from. All right. So that's where the source of the, the streams are emitted from. So that's why I picked. And crucially, if we come to the radial source, let's go back here. This is where the streaming, the streaming particles are created. I have the sprites picked as the first image. This is sort of a, a long comet-like streak. You can use any image you want, but this gives you an idea how we're going to make that streaking effect. Yeah. Now, everything else is actually very straightforward. I actually have the color tweaked slightly, but nothing fancy here, just modulating the color. And I've set the usual angle starts and ends to point to the right direction, but with a little degree in variation just to give it more, more, you know, more excitement, so to speak. And I've set the starting and ending velocities to be quite high, 150 to 200, because we want the particles to stream out. And we have your standard particle solver. And of course, the fast fluids field. Now, if you recall, the fast fluids field is a very useful force field that can be used to approximate or simulate a fluid-like motion very, very quickly. It works with the standard particle solver, it's very useful, 
and that's what we're using for the streams. Now this is all pretty standard stuff, right? It's all covered in the previous tutorials. What's actually changed? Well, I'm going to cover what's actually really interesting about this. Now, let's look at the particle solver. Yeah, we actually have a couple of options here. Now, first of all, I have actually checked this has trail option, right? This actually enables particles to have trails. Now check this on. When you do the computation, it might take a bit more memory. So make sure you have a machine with at least eight to, or preferably 16 gig gigabytes of memory because particles, particle systems take a bit more memory if you have the trail, the trailing system. But that's what we're going to use. And we also have this particles max trail num. So this is a, the maximum amount of trails a trail each particle can have, you know, how much trailing motion it can have. I've set it to 30, which is quite high because we want a streaming type of effect. Okay, you can set it any, any effect you, any number you want, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm setting it to 30. You'll see in a moment why, All right? So crucially, has trail is checked and particles max trail num is set to 30. Okay, now, what else do we have here? Going back to the radial source, all we need to do is again, check use trail, very important, okay? And trail now set to 30. That's, remember, in the particle solver, we had set the maximum amount of trail, uh, you know, tr trail each particle has to 30. So we can set the trail number of the particle to the maximum, which is 30. If you go beyond that, it's gonna cap it to the max num. So basically what we're saying is, every particle emitted from this radial source is going to have a trail, and it's going to have a trailing number of 30. That's really the key to this, to this demo, all right, to this tutorial. You're actually going to see the, 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 the trails come out from emitting from, from the spaceship. And uh, we also have another particle system. Now in this, tu in this tutorial, there's actually two particle systems. And when I run the full blown demo, you'll see multiple particle systems. You can actually put multiple particle systems in a single flow graph. It's super powerful. Now the other particle system is just the asteroid field. It really is super simple. It's a radial source that just emits from a fixed position. I've set it to negative 250, zero, zero. It's just a, but, a, but a bit of trial and error. Uh, crucially, the sprite image is set to this asteroid or rock looking thing. And it just links up to a source. This is a super simple particle system. It just you know gets emitted from a, a single location and then it's spewed out over like you know random locations and then and then towards a certain direction. That's for the asteroid. So combined, so these two in combination will actually give you a trailing, a trailing particles, a particle system, a trail from the spaceship, and also an asteroid field. So why don't we run it and see what we get? So I'm going to run it right now. It's very fast because this is actually just running a standard particle solver. And now you can see, there you go, the asteroids are coming through. And crucially, you notice these trails, right? That's exactly what we get. This is a combination of fast fluids. So with the fast fluids, let me let me stop this again. If we go back to the fast fluids, notice that I actually have set the frequency to be quite high, 0 0.285, uh, the octaves to be two, that's also rather high, and my curl factor, crucially, is 80. So that actually gives you that really cool lighting, like lightning type effect, see that coming out? That's when you ramp the curl factor up super high. And combined with the trails, combined with the trails, you can actually get this streaming system. Now, if you're probably wondering what's, so what happens if I turn off the trails? Let's see, if you turn off the trail, you turn off, you, if you just say no trail, then it's not that interesting, right? It's actually just a bunch of really boring particles emitted from the back of the spaceship. That's not what we want. So if you want the really cool lighting, you know, VFX type thing coming out, you set use trail to be true, and then you get this super cool effect coming out. It's actually, as, you, as you've seen, super simple to author something like this because flow is super powerful. Just with, you know, two or three nodes, you get, you get this effect, right? Okay, so that's the simplified tutorial. Let's look at the full demo now and see what other interesting things are in the node graph. So if we run the full demo, you notice, all right, so we have the trail coming out, the green stuff coming out, right? But also we added two additional trails coming out from the engine, yeah? Two engines, right? And then both of them, crucially, both of them are emitting a different particle, but they all also have trails coming out, right? So let's take a look at the flow graph again and see how it was done. Now, 
I'm going to enlarge this. This is a more complicated graph, but not really that complicated once you, once you understand the, the basic concepts. So the base, again, was the, the uh, particle system that was emitted by the fast fluids field. So we have those, um, those streams coming out. But we actually also have two additional things. So these are the ones emitted by the engine. You notice there are two radio sources, right? And if I come here, if I click on one of the region pos uh, positions, you notice it's actually here, this guy. So this is from the first engine, right? And then I have another region position over here. And let's click on that. And that's from the second engine. Right, so we have two radial sources, right? Both emanating from two engines, right? And then we have your standard fast fluids field that is going to essentially drive, drive those two engine particles with an extremely high, high curl factor, 15. So that makes it super curly, if you want to call it that way. And they all go through the same particle solver. In this case, the trail num, max trail num is set to 15. Right? And they all have trails on them. Use trails here and use trail here. Right? So with that in mind, when you actually run the simulation, this is what you get, which I think is extremely cool. Right? It's extremely cool. So again, to reiterate, all you need to do is actually use the, the power of the trail trail functionality. Check that on to get these streaming particles and then you just place your standard particle system you know for like the asteroid field just emanating from a single radio source to finish off the effect and there you have it this is a tutorial on how to make a spaceship flying through an asteroid field with a bunch of vfx from the thrusters and some really cool lighting green lighting effects from the spaceship i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and there's a lot more to come happy animating